The U.S. Open has always been a place where the PBA stars have shined. In 2000, Robert Smith, searching for his first career title, struck out in the 10th frame and put the ball firmly in Norm Duke's court. When Duke left an 8-pin on the first shot, Smith was a major winner. In 2001, Mika Korbunemi looked to add a U.S. Open crown to the ABC Masters title he already owned. The top seed came out firing, striking on seven of his first nine shots to defeat Patrick Healy Jr. to win his second major. Two seasons ago, it was all Walter Ray Williams Jr. Already in possession of one U.S. Open crown, the number one seed followed an open in the first frame with six consecutive strikes to blow away Michael Haugen Jr. Last season, Pete Weber was the top seed. His opponent in the final was 22-time titles Brian Voss. In a rare matchup of Hall of Famers, PDW is too much down the stretch, downing Voss and becoming a three-time U.S. Open champion. Right on. That's what it's all about right there. With so much on the line, a three-year tour exemption and a $100,000 first place prize, ESPN brings you the 62nd U.S. Open presented by Odor Eaters. From Brunswick Zone, Carol Lear in North Brunswick, New Jersey, just south of New York City, it's Dave Ryan with Leslie Goodell and Randy Peterson, along with four finalists who are ready to roll. His five career titles include the 2000 ABC Masters and the 2001 U.S. Open. Last season's PBA Player of the Year, the fourth seed from Heartland, Michigan, by way of Tampere, Finland, Mika Koivuniemi. When the lanes get tough, straighter is greater, and nobody is better at it than Major Mika. Today, he will try to loft his way to a third major title. Two U.S. Open titles, six total major championships, but the number that matters is 40, as in career titles. With a win today, he will tie Earl Anthony's magical mark of 41. From Ocala, Florida, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. The consummate shot maker will have to call on all of his skills if he is to win on what he called yeah. the toughest U.S. Open oil pattern yeah. in recent history. The number the two seed today is number one on the PBA point list. He has won two of his four career titles this season from Terrytown, New York, Patrick Allen. The smooth throwing left-hander has hoisted championship trophies twice this season. Can our lone southpaw add his first PBA major to that tally? Yes, yes. Dick Weber, he bowled in the TV finals in three of four PBA majors last season. The 1998 Rookie of the Year, he has five career PBA titles. From Flower Mound, Texas, Chris Barnes. The one thing missing from Chris Barnes' resume is a PBA major. Today he finds himself in the enviable position of needing only one win to change that fact. These are your finalists for the 62nd U.S. Open, presented by Odor Eaters. Hello and welcome everyone to New Jersey. It is with a touch of sadness that ESPN brings you the broadcast of the 62nd U.S. Open. Last weekend, legend Dick Weber passed on at the age of 75. He is certainly known as one of the most classy and wonderful representative this sport has ever known, and certainly one of the most talented. He owned the 1960s, winning 17 of his 26 titles. He was bowler and player of the year four times. Left us all with an unforgettable impression that he was the game's most loved and respected personality. Randy, you knew Dick Weber very well. What kind of person was he? He was the uh, greatest ambassador our sport's ever known. Um, Dick never met a stranger, ever. And uh, he was loved by so many, isn't it ironic? that the day that we got the news of his passing just happened to be Valentine's Day. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry, Dave, a little choked up. The only thing I'd like to say is, Mr. Weber, it was an honor. Dick Weber certainly would have insisted that the show go on, and that's what we'll do. We'll pay tribute to Dick throughout our broadcast here today. But big storylines certainly emerge. Walter Ray Williams Jr. goes for his 41st career title, trying to tie the greater Anthony. Walter Ray's got a huge mountain to climb today. 
uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, he's got a star-studded field that he has to try to get past. And number two, he has to do it on what he said was the toughest U.S. Open oil pattern he's bowled on in a long time. Randy, tough, certainly, format for these bowlers to get this far. 433 bowlers started our tournament with some round robin and some elimination play. They got themselves down to the four finals, and that's where we are. A step ladder format today, led by our top seed, Chris Barnes. Match number one pits two former U.S. Open champions as the big Finn, Mika Koivuniemi, takes on the third seed, Deadeye Walter Ray Williams Jr. The winner will face Patrick Allen, who finished second in the season's first major, the Miller High Life ABC Masters. Waiting in the final is Chris Barnes, who hopes today will be the day he claims his first major title. The big question, what is on the mind of legendary bowler Walter Ray Williams Jr.? Let's find out. Third member of our crew, lane side, Leslie Goodell. Well, Walter Ray has the chance to reach two milestones today. The first being, if he wins, he will become just the second player to win three U.S. Open titles. But on a larger scale, a win today would give him 41 career PBA Tour victories, tying Earl Anthony. Is that on your mind at all? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, well, it is on my mind, but when I'm out there bowling, I'm concentrating on my target and trying to throw good shots. Well, as Walter Ray told us yesterday, guys, three wins is a tough, is a long way to go. Three wins are not easy to get. Leslie, that is for sure, as Walter Ray Williams Jr. tries to tie the legend. And Hall of Famer Earl Anthony on the line today, $100,000. More points than normal because this is a major, second of our four major championships. Chris Barnes awaits what, as Leslie said, could be Walter Ray going through a couple of bowlers to get that far. Step ladder format, different than we would see on a normal PBA Tour event. With Mika's ball. Yes, the U.S. Open is underway from New Jersey. From Ocala, Florida, originally from California. Dead eyes, they call him. With his wife, Paige Pennington, alongside. Gets some late help. Each strike to begin this exciting semifinal, leading us to the Baby Ruth Real Deal matchup. 51 games all told for the week, 33 in the last two days. Check out these averages, U.S. Open style. And look at this, these guys are striking about half of the time. Here's the thing I want you to see, though. Look at that unusually low spare conversion percentage. Reason being, when the guys missed the pocket, they left puzzles up. Got help on the five, not on number seven there. We saw Walter Ray's incredible success on television over the past dozen years. Walter Ray looking for the shaker. Leaves only the seven pin. Didn't miss a single pin spare all week. Dead Eye was phenomenal last night. We watched him all the way through. Round robin match play into the seeding game, which he ended up as the number three seed ahead of Mika Kuobunemi. Outbowled him in that final game, and he, with Walter Ray and Mika, appeared locked in. Mika's words to us last night about the round robin match play, our different format, just survive. He knew he was in that top four, and his goal throw the ball hard and avoid trouble. Yeah, keep the ball online. A lot of strategy that. Uh, that a lot of the players used was to try to just somehow get it to the 1-3. Lots of help. Good carry. And look, you can see the players are already into the fifth there. That's the 25th board. There's only 10 more boards left on that side of the lane, and Mika carries the early double. His road here. Qualified seventh after the 18 games. We had qualifying blocks to start and then into round robin match play of the last 24. Those two great bowlers did go head to head twice. That's way high. Almost crosses over for Brooklyn. Well, this was a theme all week, though, Dave. When you did miss the pocket, which was often, 
you know, did you leave yourself something you could actually make? Mika avoids the split, leaving the 3-6. We'll break down the oil pattern, or special U.S. Open major pattern, and it has been incredibly challenging for the bowlers. At 40 feet long, called by many, including Walter Ray, the most difficult on tour this season. When you get the right format in this type of environment with this type of lane condition, the cream always rises to the top. That's why you have the four finalists that you have today. Yeah. Blisters the rack, 60 feet to success for Walter Ray Williams Jr. And he told us that exactly last night. He loves this format. The more games, the better for the better players. They want to bowl games. These guys are they're trained to bowl, bowl, bowl. And this week, they got their fill. 51 games of bowling, if you got through all the qualifying into the round of 24, match play round robin, then the seeding game. Yeah. Perfect shot. With practice games, these guys bowl more than 90 games this week. Yeah, a ton of games. 11,000 plus pins he knocked down. You see what he averaged in qualifying. That's the 18 games. That's over three days. The last 27 games, Major Mika, first foreign-born player to win the ABC Masters and the U.S. Open. He's the first and only bowler in history to win majors as his first two titles. This is a big day for him. He knows about success in majors. Well, Mika loves the tough stuff. And there's a reason why. He keeps his hand underneath the back of it. And he can keep the ball on line. Throws just enough hook to knock 10 pins down, get that weak 10 out. But he's very, very good at lofting the front part of the lane and taking a little bit of the lane out of play and keeping the ball on line. Great to have Stroh motion with us. Great carry. Mika Korvunemi, who throws the ball so hard with his loft. See how far left he is. Again, right around the fifth there on the left side, 25th board, and guess what? These players are going to go, they're going to move deeper than that as the matches progress. <laughs> Ten pin. Man. And he liked it. Pretty good shot here, but this ball is kind of DOA once it gets to the pocket, and that's why he leaves the weak 10. That's where the six pin just goes to the sidewall and doesn't do its work on the 10 pin. Walter Ray obviously thought it was a better shot than that. Walter Ray has won six majors last in the 0304 season. ABC Masters in Reno, Nevada, and having an outstanding season this year as well. As we see the road of the PBA, Denny's World Championship. Denny's the official restaurant of the PBA Tour. Patrick Allen will see later today as the two seed. Denny Wiseman, who won the Masters to begin our season in Milwaukee. And PA is coming up. Winner of this match in our stepladder format. Ten pin down for Walter Ray Williams Jr. We have got a beauty. Don't go anywhere. The 62nd U.S. Open presented by Odor Eaters is underway with our first match. Walter Ray Williams Jr. Head-to-head -head here with Mika Kurbunemi, who knows about winning major championships. From North Brunswick, New Jersey, the 62nd U.S. Open presented by Odor Readers is brought to you by Odor Readers with unique Zorbatex technology, destroys foot odor and absorbs sweat on contact. By Miller High Life, to live simply, proudly, boldly, manly, this is the High Life. By Dexter, the number one bowling shoe in the world, what's your size? Try one of Denny's new hearty scrambles, the Meat Lovers or the Heartland Scramble, each just $4.99. Denny's, we're cooking now. New Jersey's Museum of Agriculture, about 10 minutes from where we are, in North Brunswick, New Jersey. Mika Kovunami, a 19-pin lead. Randy on Walter A. Williams Jr. Match one is underway. 
Here's your oil pattern that we played on this week. Only a 40 foot pattern, but what made it tough was what they did side to side. Equal amounts of oil all the way across the lane. And what that did was it made the lane seem like they were drier in the middle and slicker outside. That's why guys attacked it from multiple angles this week. The bottom line is you had to make shots. You want to know how tough they were? Well, out of over 10,000 games bowled this week, we only had one perfect game. That is sick tough. So focused. Mika resumes our match. Trying to get that to wheel back into the pocket. Double wood, 2-8 for him. Again, you know, if you're a little firm, even if it's on the right line, the ball's going to skid, and it's not going to recover down the lane. So your speed has to be perfect. Release has to be perfect. Direction has to be perfect. I think it's interesting to note that he is going to throw a plastic ball at the 2-8. Normally, we throw a hook ball into the 2-8 because you have to cover the back pin, the 8-pin. Covers the double wood quite well. Our exempt tour rules for this year. At the 16 event champions. The remaining exemptions come from that point list, also the multi-year exemption. And those come from winning majors like this one. Three-year exemption for this U.S. Open. Danny Wiseman is already set through 06-07. Our Dexter Tournament of Champions World Championship in Michigan. Still to come, you can get five years of an exemption by winning in Ypsilanti this year. Eastern Michigan campus. Boy, that crossover high. Right through the nose. 3-10. This ball is left of target. No way it's going to hold line. This time he doesn't get the good break. However, he leaves himself with a very makeable split, the 310. One of 20 so far. That's match play only. Round robin match play with 24 bowlers in this format. Can he convert? You bet. Big shot. Mika Koibunemi. His family is back home in Heartland, Michigan, not far from Ann Arbor. Watching closely today. And what he's done the last two frames, Mika, is given Walter Ray some room. Looks for a double seventh frame. He'll take a five pin lead with a strike. Four pin. Walter Ray has not missed the pocket. And he only has one double to show for it. Walter Ray using a dull ball. This ball looks pretty good right until it gets in front of the head pin. He's looking for a little help. How about a trip four, man? Deadeye, as usual, takes care of the single pin conversion, in this case, number four. Don't forget the nation's top bowlers, the world's top bowlers like Mika Kuomunemi hit the lanes next Sunday afternoon. As ESPN's coverage of the PBA Tour rolls on, the finals of the Cambridge Credit Classic live from West Babylon, New York, on Long Island. The PBA Tour next Sunday. Note that start time, 12.30 Eastern. For more, log on to ESPN.com. And don't forget our Miller High Life PBA Skills Challenge returns next week. Back to the regular tour event. Wow. Well, Speaking of splits. Right. You be kidding me. Well, yeah, this looks like the last shot where he only left a four pin. Right now, Walter Ray out bowling Mika and losing total pins. He's got to get the ball to this side of the four pin, slide the four into the nine. Remember why these guys are here, because they made splits like this all week. Through a lot of games, almost 90, including practice games, but he will not get the nine. Remember, Walter Reyes had three prior shows after winning early in the season in Cleveland to tie Earl Anthony's record. He hasn't been able to do it. In fact, hasn't won a match to get to a final, losing three times in the semifinals in our regular tour format. Here at Stepladder, another shot at it. Fourth chance to tie Earl's record this season. Back to Mika. Seven pin. He 
You may hear him say Gesta, which in Finnish means hold or la de nut. Carry now. Mika known very well in his native land of Finland. In fact, he's on a daily internet news report. Newspaper writer calls him from Helsinki a couple times a week to update the nation on his progress. Seven pin down. Show you the two different lines. One is the one on the far right as you're looking at it is Mika Koivuniemi, Walter Ray to the left of that. So Mika starting here, Walter Ray here, but notice that both balls end up at the same break point down the lane. Max numbers, bottom left, foundation frame time. Mika's up 17. Lots of pressure. Here it comes. <laughs> No help on number seven. So along with the lane conditions being tough and having a hard time getting the ball to the pocket, you still have to put up with carry. And right now their carry's bad, especially for Walter Ray. But the scenario is simple. If Mika spares here and spares in the 10th frame, Walter Ray can strike out and win this. Right on the money on the single pin, seven pin conversion for Mika Kordunemi. The bottom line working on an open is so important here. Late in the match, down 16. Foundation frame, 10 pin. Wow. Well. He's putting his hands up in disgust because it doesn't happen to him a lot. That, that would for sure be a strike. His words to us last night, Randy, does feel snake bitten a bit by what's happened on TV. He's one of some very good bowlers. Two of the three prior to this matchup have gone on to win the tournament that Walter Ray has lost this year, trying to tie Earl's record. His message to us last night, I've got to get over that hump as Patrick Allen awaits as the second seed, step ladder format. Chris Barnes is the number one seed. He has to play just one match, one game for the title. Can Walter Ray change the history? That's high, look out. Done. Mika will advance to take on Patrick Allen in the next match. And I guarantee you the reason why Walter Egg throws a Greek church in the 10th frame is because of the bad carry that played on his mind throughout the match. You can see he just didn't like that at all. Walter Ray Williams Jr. who called Dick Weber a great person, such a friendly, outgoing ambassador of our sport. Walter Ray wanted to mention his heart going out to the Weber family. Same goes for Mika. <laughs> Jeff Poget, John Berglund, VPA President and Executive Director are here. So many wonderful people with their outstanding staffs putting together this great event. Nearly a thousand are jammed in to our arena setting here in North Brunswick. Great crowd. Won't like that one, but it won't matter. Mika has advanced to the second match to take on Patrick Allen, the lone left-hander of our four-man step ladder field here at the U.S. Open. And We've said it three times this season already. Make it four times. Walter Ray Williams Jr. is going to have to wait another day. To Tyrell Anthony's record. Great conversion there for Mika. What is Mika's famous line? I am Lefty's worst nightmare. How about that? Three and it goes Patrick Allen, and he takes him on coming up. Our 
entertainment being provided by DJ Gutterball on the pinups today. It's the 62nd U.S. Open presented by Odor Eaters. Mika Kuevanemi has knocked off Walter Ray Williams Jr. 212-179 in match one. That means Mika takes on Patrick Allen in the next match. Goes for his third title of the season. Randy tries to keep things out of the channel after we see from DJ Gutterball with Mika Kuevanemi in this week's Miller Six Pack. What is the smartest thing you've ever done? I haven't done that yet. Is it coming? I hope it's coming soon. Keep us posted. <laughs> what is the one place in the world you would like to see for the first time? I've never been in Australia, so that's one place that I'd like to go someday. I mean, and you've been everywhere. You've never been to Australia. I've been traveled maybe 25, 30 countries, but never in Australia. What's the best time of day for you? Afternoon. Why? I'm awake. <laughs> You're awake. I'm awake. I'm ready. As a child growing up, what was your favorite toy? I used to play a lot of it Legos. Legos? Yeah. What would you build? I built house, cars, all kind of stuff. What's the greatest sports moment you've ever seen? It was ice hockey world championships. 95, Finland beat Sweden in Sweden. I have to, I was having the Swedish goals. What is the one thing that you do that takes your mind completely off of bowling? Uh, I spend a lot of time with my kids. I think that's the best time for me to get my mind fresh. Always like spending time with wife Lena, his kids Ida and Lydia. On the road, our schedule resumes 12.30 Eastern next week. On Long Island, the two Pro-Am sites on the 26th, Babylon Lanes and Garden City Bowl as well. And then down the road, Woodland Bowl, Indianapolis, Indiana, the Baby is Real Deal Classic. Pro-Am tickets available on PBA.com at Woodland Bowl Saturday, March 5th. Which is your best source for PBA information? www.pba.com. Fans can purchase tickets, register for Pro-Ams online, and the PBA has announced the tickets for the final event of the season. The PBA Dexter Tournament of Champions will go on sale tomorrow at pba.com and the Mohegan Arena box office in Uncasville, Connecticut. It has been a very exciting week here at the 62nd U.S. Open. No, the annual Odor Eaters split with a million bucks contest took place here yesterday. Brian Gossard shot at a five pin for $1,000. Hmm, a strike here would have been worth 10000 but it just missed. Finally, could Brian convert the elusive 710 for a million dollars? Not this time, the seven pin stood. Brian got $500 and takes home some great PBA memories from the U.S. Open. Great crowd here at the U.S. Open in New Jersey. Tommy Jones, Patrick Allen, the only two-time tour winners so far this year in our season. No one has won three, making his fourth show. Patrick Allen bidding for that player of the year honor, isn't he, Leslie Goodell? Oh, and he, you know, he's taken his game to a different level this year, Dave. And while nobody who's been watching him is surprised to see him here, Patrick, you said to us yesterday, you can't believe you're here. Is, in some ways, it just enough to even be here? Well, yeah, it's definitely enough to be here. But, um, you know, just to be put in the same words as uh, Mika, Walter Ray, and Chris Barnes, you know, just to be here is amazing. But we still got some work to do. Well, he said it's an honor to be among this group. But what I don't think he's grasped yet is the fact that they see him as one of them, Dave. No question about it, Leslie, our second seed and lone left-hander of our four-man stepladder TV format today. Now takes on big Mika Koivunemi. And what were Mika's words last night as we interviewed him? If I take on a left-hander like Patrick Allen, it's a lock. I'm going to the final. I'm guaranteed $50,000. I'm sure Patrick Allen will have something to say about that, especially since he beat Mika in last season's ABC Masters. He didn't knock Mika out of the tournament, but he did knock him out of the winner's bracket.
10 pin for Mika. Pin conversion takes care of it. Patrick Allen's family well represented. They live in Terratown, New York, not far from New York City, just north, in fact, right off the Hudson River. There's Sheila. Dad Dennis, stepmom Lottie, we're going to try to make the trip as well. But Patrick didn't want to go home on his off time, wanted to stay in Jersey and stay focused, and he did very well for himself. All 10 down to the pit for Patrick Allen. Check out the strike percentage versus Patrick Allen's. It's hard to believe that you'd make a telecast with a 39% strike percentage, but a lot of spares. Look at his spare conversion, 92%. He's got major experience. He finished second at the Miller High Life Masters. First tournament of the year, Dave. Just behind Danny Wiseman. However, against Mika, he's had his troubles. Number 10 wiggles and stays up. And again, a really good shot to keep the ball in the one-two pocket for PA. You see that spot down the lanes that, you know, that dark, those dark strips at about 45 feet down the lane. That's equivalent to the second arrow on both sides. You're going to see the players kind of bumping off of that, using it as a break point. Patrick going three, as we mentioned, against Mika. The finals of the Cambridge Credit Classic, the day Mika threw a 300 last season on TV. Also, the ABC Masters in Reno last year. So he's faced Mika on TV in some big moments and has so far been unable to overcome the big fin. Does that change today, in your opinion? <laughs> Putting me on the spot. Patrick Allen's line to the pocket, in my opinion, looks better than Mika's. And... If Patrick Allen can get it off his hand clean like he has all week, he will beat Mika Koivunyemi. If he can't, Mika will advance to the title. Remember, Mika made the guarantee. He could beat PA. Oh, he avoided what looked like right off the hand. Could have been a big four type shot. It was high. See, if Mika was further right, if he was, it was, if he was allowed to play further right, then I would say, you know, it's, it's pretty much an even matchup. But the lanes, the way they broke down in practice have forced the right-handers, I think, further left than they wanted to play them. PA, on the other hand, isn't as deep, and I like his line to the pocket better. Well, we all remember it, folks, don't we? 25 years ago, a group of young hockey players represented the United States in the 1980 Olympics and delivered one of the greatest upsets in history by defeating the heavily favored Russians en route to winning the gold medal game. Do you believe in miracles? Al Michaels' famous call, yes. Relive the thrilling action. 25th anniversary, special on ESPN tonight at 8 Eastern. Mika's a big hockey fan, being from Finland, was quite distraught. The second round of NHL talks did not yield a settlement yesterday in New York. No NHL hockey this season. So what's your outlet? Tune in tonight here on ESPN for the Miracle on Ice broadcast. Highlight, highlight is the theme on the right side for the righties. A little too quick or a little too far to the right. Mika leaves it to 2-5. 15th career TV appearance and second of the season. January 9th of this year, Mesa, Arizona outside Phoenix. Beat Parker Bone the third in the finals by four pins for a tour win and an exemption for next year. But here it's $100,000, a three-year exemption, a major championship, which would be his third on the line. Mika told us last night, coming off Player of the Year honors, seven shows last season, tying Chris Barnes first on the tour in that stat. He's bowled well, just hasn't been able to overcome hurdles at the right time. A little bit like Walter Ray. He's been right there in the hunt. Things can really change for Mika. The same goes for PA, who gets some late pin action and help on number 10.
He's playing the fourth arrow. Mika's playing left of the fifth arrow. Again, better angle for PA to get to the pocket consistently. Advantage Patrick Allen. You see what he averaged in the qualifying. 13th after 27 games. Three six-game blocks and a nine-game block just to make it to match play. Told us last night he put an extra practice, extra couple of hours the first day he got here. Used the Pro-Am during the week as a practice session to get a better look and look Can you out. Can to slap the cameras when I'm bowling? Uh-oh. There's a lot Jesus. of media here. We have press, we have lots of fans. Anybody see a flash? Uh, Patrick's not happy with a distraction. Yeah, and he flinched as soon as he let it go. Something distracted him. Pays the price, leaving the one, three, seven. Has to gain his composure, make this wash out. How'd he go about it? Get the ball to the right side of the head pin, throw it into the seven. Does not convert. Head pin and the seven up. Very difficult to overcome the distraction. You do to our sports a lot like golf and tennis. I mean, the fans can play a role in distracting our players. Especially on the release there at the last second, that can be a real difficult thing to, to deal with. Eleven pin lead for the big fin. He didn't like that one at all. Wow. Back into the oil pattern, not the response he wanted with his ball. Oil is kind of pushing down the lane and it's keeping the ball from making the turn back to the pocket like it was doing in the first match. The adjustment for Mika would probably be going to a stronger ball on the back part of the lane, something that would flip a little bit harder down lane. Mika talked about making moves throughout the round robin. Round of 24. He knows about making the proper adjustments. And let's see what happened with Patrick Allen moments ago, Randy, and the flash. Right there. Right there is the reflection of the flash that caught Patrick Allen. That came from a fan. Don't want to blame the press. That's way high, avoid the split. Wow, big break there. He did make a ball change. You see how much more aggressive that ball was in the back part of the lane? And it almost proved disastrous. You can see right now, Mika's fishing. And this is what the players did all week. But the ones that were just able to stay out of trouble, avoid open frames, figure it out, and maybe catch a late double or three bagger, would go on to win their match. This oil pattern called by our four finalists, the toughest of the year. And under the TV lights, the breakdown of the pattern always responds differently than what we saw all the way through the round robin match play last night. Well, Dave, I've bowled on this pattern. The 18 games of qualifying, I made the first cut. It took under a 200 average to make it. This is one of the toughest patterns I've bowled on in the last four or five years. Let's see if PA can regain his focus. Only down five pins though. Still in the match. That's I too. Doesn't take much on either side of the lane. A little bit of a pinch or a grab at the bottom of the swing makes the ball go high. Big spare conversion, knocks them all down. Come on, man. That's the proper response from the early distraction. And still just a five pin spread between these two great champions. PA has got to be thinking, although he's a modest fellow, about player of the year honors. First time he would have won that. 
if he can get his third title, his first ever major. James Simone, Warren Fielder, and their respective staffs doing a tremendous job. Here in North Brunswick. No help on number 10 for Patrick Allen. The center has had several visits from the PBA. The first back in 1963 for the PBA New Jersey Open. Didn't return until 91. And back here for the Johnny Petragli Open that year, won by Pete Weber. Pete is not with us today to defend his championship. At home with his family. Mourning the loss of the legend, Dick Weber. Pete knows about US Open success. The only other time the U.S. Open was held here in New Jersey, Pete Weber worked his way through the field as the fourth seed. With his father Dick watching, he beat Dave Houston, Mark Baker, and Ryan Schaefer facing off with Marshall Holman in a title match. Pete went on to win his first ever U.S. Open. Last season it was Pete's day again in California. This time he was the top seed and met fellow Hall of Famer Brian Voss in the title match. A close one was broke up when Voss could not convert the baby split of the seven. Weber took advantage. Baby now, it's my team. Right on, that's what it's all about right there. Coming to you from North Brunswick, New Jersey, the 62nd U.S. Open presented by Oda Readers is brought to you by Geico, you too can save 15% or more on car insurance. Call Geico at 1-800-947-AUTO. By Storm, the Bowler's Company. Try one of Denny's new hearty scrambles, the Meat Lovers or the Heartland Scramble. Eat just $4.99. Denny's, we're cooking now. Match two is underway. Mika Kuevanemi a six-pin lead into his sixth frame over Patrick Allen. Mika K. Ed Walter A. Williams Jr. already. Chris Barnes as the top seed awaits the winner of this match. Well, ever wonder what makes Walter A. Williams Jr. so good? Randy attempts to decipher greatness in this week's Dexter approach. Yeah, and he's great for a couple of reasons. Number one, he's got a motion that he can repeat, and it's withstood the test of time. The other thing that makes Walter Ray Williams Jr. so good, in my opinion, is his swing. You see how the swing comes out away from him? We'll draw a line right there on the side of the ball. Go ahead and roll it. You see how much this direction that ball goes? What that does is it takes his hand and his elbow and gets to the inside part of the ball, so it's almost impossible for him to chicken wing it. Walter Ray fell short here today in our first match against Mika. He's up six pins. His sixth frame. Perfect. Making the proper adjustments is Mika Kuebunemi. From down lane, this is how the players are playing the lane conditions. You can see that Mika's ball is much further, further to the inside part of the lane than Patrick Allen's. Again, I like Patrick Allen's angle better. He needs to regroup mentally. Difference between match one and two. Significant for Mika. His first strike just came there. Sixth frame. Strike here, he's up 16. Look at it go, Brooklyn. Crosses over the head pin. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. Yeah, you know, this happened a lot this week. A player makes a mistake, and he ends up getting the great break out of it. With a double, sixth and seventh, 16 pin lead for Mika. Don't forget, 12 30 Eastern. Next Sunday, ESPN's coverage of the PBA Tour continues. The world's best, the finals of the Cambridge Credit Classic. That's live from West Babylon, New York, on Long Island. For more, log on to PBA.com. Our Miller Highlight PBA Skills Challenge will return next week. Back to PA. That's pin action. Right back at you, Mop. Right back at you, Mika. That's what Patrick Allen just said to him. 
Play. What? Oh? All right. Love it. Love it. <laughs> He'll take one more just like it. Come on. Hold on. Got your break back. Come on. Looks like he's overcome the camera flash, which distracted him, caused it open. Earlier in the match. Six stands. Pretty good shot there to only leave the six pin. The difference in this match, the huge break that Mika got in the seventh frame, carrying a Brooklyn to double up. Patrick Allen's issues with the flash camera, creating that open frame in the fourth. Patrick Allen trailing by 16 with a conversion here. Six pin down, Patrick. The only bowler on tour this year to win back-to-back -back titles, and the first since Walter Williams Jr. did it in the year 2000. It's only been done 59 times in PBA history. Dallas and Birmingham, back-to-back -back weeks. Eighth frame for Mika. Strike here puts him up 26 pins. Goes for the turkey. Come on, Mika. Boy, not the spare you want to shoot at this juncture. Nothing easy about the bucket. Even though they're all together, this is a very choppable spare. Covers all four nicely and avoids what would be a deadly open this late in the match. 12-pin lead. Our top seed, Chris Barnes, is next. Chris already has wrapped up $50,000, second place prize, but he's never won a major. He has an eight-match losing streak on TV. Can he overcome those numbers? Question, which remains to be answered. <laughs> Blistering the rack. Mika coming from so far left. Remember last time on this lane, Dave, he went Brooklyn. He said, well, let me give it some more air time. There's a little loft. That'll get it right of the head pin. Check out the height of this back swing. Big, tall, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, foot Mika Koivuniemi. Takes a little bit of the knee bend out of it, and all of a sudden, his release point becomes pretty high off the lane. That helps him to create that loft. Patrick has faced lots of pressure this year. One of seven bowlers on tour to make back-to-back -back shows. First this season to win two straight, as we said. He knows big moments. Down 12. Six pin. Pretty disgusted with the fact that he really hasn't gotten a break the entire game, it, with the exception of Hello. little trip bucket in the seventh frame. Now there's a cell phone going off in his back or in his uh, behind him. At least he's got a sense of humor about it. <laughs> Heard him say hello. <laughs> Takes care of the single pin conversion. He has not had success on that left lane. That's where he's going to finish up. He needs to throw three in the tenth right now to make Mika Koivuniemi show up and get a mark in the tenth frame. A mark in good count. Patrick Allen can strike out for 194. Mika going at a 197 pace. There's still room for Patrick Allen. Not much, though. Needs it. Has 10 down. Big shot for PA. Trying to put the pressure on Major Mika. Make him earn it. Make him earn it, bro. God. Come on. Just like
like Norm Duke said, no gimmies. Quoting one of our PBA stars, Norm Duke. Won a couple of weeks ago in Atlanta. Another no perfect shot. No freebies. No freebies. Well, I think if Patrick okay. wasn't distracted early on in the game, he would have done a lot more of this. Right now, with good count here, he will force Mika Koivuniemi to mark in the 10th frame. No easy task at the U.S. Open on these brutal lane conditions. Remember, no gimmies. Mika is focused. So is P.A., another big shot. Paralyzing five goes down. It means Mika needs a spare plus an eight pin count to win and make the final. We are coming to you from Brunswick Zone, Carolier, North Brunswick, New Jersey, not far from New York City. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, Leslie Goodell, along with our great ESPN PBA crew, watching match two. Mika's already knocked off Walter Ray Williams Jr., ending Walter Ray's shot at tying Earl Anthony's record. This is the second match if he wins it. He's off to the final. It's a 10 pin. Needs the spare and eight. Spare and eight, no easy test. Remember in the eighth frame on this very lane, he left the bucket. The shot looks pretty good, but it's a little firm. Six goes to the sidewall, lays in the gutter, doesn't kick out the 10. 10 pin shouldn't be a problem, but under this type of pressure, I'm not so sure getting eight is that easy. Does have the 10 pin. Now it's an eight count. Avoiding a disastrous split. Seven would tie and force a roll off, which would be incredibly dramatic. Patrick can't even look. Wow! Are you kidding me? We have a tie with a seven pin count. Incredible! Too fast, leaving the 2 4 5. We are all tied. Sudden death roll off. Our tournament director, Kirk Von Kruger, Kruger, will break down the rules for us in our sudden death roll off. Ladies and gentlemen, by PBA rule, all ties must be broken by one ball, sudden death roll off. The higher seed will have choice of starting lane and order. Patrick is elected to start on the left lane. If they both tie, they'll move to the alternate lane and continue alternating back and forth until the tie is broken. Talk about dramatic. We saw Patrick taking as the higher seed the choice of lane and order. One shot, higher pinfall wins with a tie. We repeat the process. You talk about drama. Five and four in his career roll off. Mika's at four, and he's won three. All tied for a spot of the final to face Chris Barnes. It's underway. Nine pin count. The three stands, and now with a strike, Meek advances with a nine. He ties anything less. Patrick Allen wins this game. Nine's not bad. 
I mean, I'd take my chances with nine. Obviously, a strike's better. You can't lose right now, Mika. Ten, he goes on. Nine, they continue on. Anything less. Patrick Allen advances. The definition of drama. Wow. Nine! We're still tied. Unbelievable! Check out Mika's reaction. Come on. Oh, we're tied. And how about PA's reaction? Game on. Let's, let's keep going. How difficult was it, Randy, to advance beyond the first ball of these roll-offs mentally for the players? PA, they get one re-rack. PA just took his. Very difficult. Thank you. Stay composed. Remember, we had it a couple years ago. Norm Duke, Dave Traver, they went three on, shots each. Norm Duke came on top that day. Another nine pin count. Again, the three stands for Patrick Allen. Mika's got to match it or strike. Same identical hit that he had on the left lane. Ball looked pretty good and just kind of scooted another foot or so. Doesn't turn up back to the head pin. As Chris Barnes continues to wait for his chance to win his first major. Okay, Major Mika. Match Patrick, nine or better. Anything less, PA wins. Look out. Whoa! Oh, Patrick Allen is your winner. What do you think about that? Is he ever pumped? A two ball, sudden death roll off. And Patrick Allen. We'll take on Chris Barnes for the U.S. Open title. No longer Lefty's worst nightmare. Patrick Allen took him out. He was 11-0 against Lefty's on TV. 3-0 against PA. Making 11-1 and 3-1 and now. Patrick Allen goes for his third title of the season at U.S. Open against Barnes coming up from Jersey. Extraordinary drama. A two-frame sudden death roll-off here at 194 all. Patrick Allen against Mika Kuobanemi. PA advances. He'll face Chris Barnes in the final here today. It is also a day to pay tribute to legendary Hall of Famer Dick Weber, who passed away last weekend. He won the second and third PBA events ever held, including the 59 Paramus Eastern Tourney here in the state of New Jersey. Let's go back now to the third member of our crew. Leslie Goodell is joined by two other bowling greats to speak about the late Dick Weber. Yes, Dave, and two great friends of Dick Weber's, Johnny Petraglia and Carmen Salvino. And I know it's been a difficult week for the two of you, but as we celebrate the life of Dick Weber, Carmen, you were with Dick, you bowled with Dick in 1959 at the first ever PBA event in, in Albany. So who better to tell us about the contributions that Dick Weber made to PBA? Well, Dick Weber, when you said Dick Weber, people say bowling. He carried our sport on and off the lanes. He was a notch above all of us, and uh, I miss him. Johnny, you look at Dick Weber and his legacy in Pete Weber and the first father or son um, to be inducted into the PBA Hall of Fame in that combination. What did he see Pete's accomplishments as and how proud was he of his son? I'm sure that Dick was very proud of Pete because Pete has to be under tremendous pressure uh, through his entire career. I guess to sum up Dick Weber in a, in a sentence, if you're going to paraphrase a movie, uh, Dick Weber is the man in bowling, and all the rest of us are just competent imitators. Well, Johnny, credit, jo Johnny, you credit him for being the person to influence you into being a professional bowler? I was 13 years old. went to watch him bowl in Madison Square Garden. He had such magnetism after talking to him. I want to be like him. This is what I want to do for a living. As soon as I hit 18, I was out there. And Carmen, the impact he had on you personally? Uh, he's just my friend. He's the only man that I ever bowled that beat me, and I didn't mind it. Well, there are a lot of memories everyone's going to be sharing in the weeks to come. As we go to break, we relive some more great memories from the great Dick Weber.
one of our two great PBA bowlers will win his first major championship today, either Patrick Allen or Chris Barnes. As we head now, Randy, to the Geico Direct Championship recap. Thanks, Dave. Earlier in match number one, it was Mika Koivuniemi defeating Walter Ray Williams Jr. by the score of 212-179. Mika staying clean down the stretch was the key. Then in match number two, Patrick Allen and Mika Koivuniemi tied 194-194. They went to a sudden death roll off where Patrick Allen won in two frames. Well, emotions are certainly running high after that last match of Patrick Allen. How do you get it together at this point in order to go on and win this tournament? Well, I think the momentum's mine right now. Um, obviously, I didn't think I had a chance to win that game going into the 10th, and uh, somehow, some way, you know, we're here. Well, you're going up against the strongest bowler in the field this week. And Chris, how do you get everything together to get over the hump to win this tournament? Well, I said I really just need to shut out all the external factors. Um, stay not get too focused in the past and stay present today because it doesn't really, the past doesn't predict what happens today and uh, just be me. And uh, if I stick to m what I do best, uh, we'll see where momentum ends up. All right, thanks Chris. Well, closing it out, it's been a big challenge for Chris. He'll have to keep his adrenaline in check in this one. That is the issue with Chris Barnes, no question, Leslie. One of the best, if not the best in the world, but unable so far to have a lot of success on television. Last night, Chris Barnes needed a win against Patrick Allen to claim the top seed. He bowled 280, his highest game of the tournament, which basically secured him no, no worse than $50,000. Brooklyn strike. What a break to start it for Chris Barnes. And we saw the money and points on the line. And this, our second major of the season. Well, I'll tell you what, this is not what I wanted to see out of Chris Barnes throwing a Brooklyn, his first shot out of the gate, leads me to believe that his ball reaction may be as bad as Mika's. Advantage Patrick Allen. Could be a good early sign for Chris. His mistakes in the past on TV have ended up in unmakeable splits. So it's a break, you never know. Six pin up for PA. That was pretty good right there. That was, that was quality. I think he's being sarcastic. That was, that was good stuff. A little pull. I do that every frame. <laughs> no, I don't think you want to do that, PA, if you want to win broke. this championship. He'll fix it. 14 and 6 in his career on TV. We saw success in getting to the finals. For his four and three career coming in, can he win his fifth title and his first major? That's the question. Our Baby Ruth Real Deal matchup, Randy. Incredibly close matchup. Really the only number that sticks out is the spare percentage. PA right now, all he needs to do is fill frames, stay clean, avoid trouble. It'll put an awful lot of pressure on Chris Barnes. Struck half of the time he was up in his last match. Blisters the rack. You know Patrick very well. You know the sport of bowling, Randy, as well as anyone. How do you rebound and keep the emotions in check, as Leslie said with Patrick, after that roll-off? Well, that's why we're professionals. I mean, professionals know how to, to keep their emotions in check, and, and the great ones have always been able to regulate their intensity and be able to just, you know, control their emotions. It's okay to be emotional as long as it doesn't get in the way of what you're trying to do physically. That's high, but a break again, just the 10 pin up. That could have been a tough split to look at. This ball again high. The first shot he threw out of the gate with Brooklyn. Chris Barnes had practice prior to going on the air for this championship match and has yet to hit the pocket. It was a long time ago, right before everything started. He was on the TV prior practice, but in a stepladder format, he only has one game as he takes care of the 10 pin there. Qualified as a first seed, as Randy mentioned, an incredible last game in the positioning contest, the last of our round robin match play 
action last night through 280. Head to head with PA, pretty good. And you can see that he bowled PA twice. He bowled him once in the round robin. Remember, round robin match play, you bowl everybody once. The 24th game being a position round. Lane level look at it, all 10 down. For Chris Barnes, who's trying to give himself an early birthday present. Friday, he turns 35 years old. That'd be a great happy birthday to me. Dating back to 98, six in a row for the top seed. Overall in U.S. Open uh -oh. history as the four goes Whoa. down. Hey, how about that for Patrick? PA takes another re-rack as we take a look at a huge break. That gives him an early double and a 10-pin lead. Well, no NHL hockey this year after round two of negotiations failed, unfortunately, this weekend in New York. But 25 years ago, a group of young hockey players represented the U.S. In the 1980 Olympics, they beat the incredibly heavily favored Russian Olympic hockey team. Do you believe in miracles? Yes, said Al Michaels on his legendary call. Relive the thrilling action. Miracle on Ice 25th anniversary special on ESPN tonight at 8 Eastern time. You not over there? Guess not. Thanks. Some of the fans moving a bit to Patrick's left. Love it. Love it. Love it. Making sure there are no distractions. He's up 10. 20 with a strike. Goes for the turkey. Are you kidding me? Deserve it. Catches a great Put break the frame before, and then he just gets it right back in the teeth with a bad break there, leaving the 6-8. The last time Pia was distracted Almost last game. There. He won. Get the ball over here. Slide the 6 into the 8. Walter Ray, remember, left the right-hander 6-8, the 4-9, in his match, failed to convert. Over 50% split conversions so far this week. Does he have it? Wow. No whiffs on a pair. So a lower pin count could really hurt Patrick Allen. Against Chris Barnes, the exciting final continues. We are coming up to Chris Barnes, fourth frame. He's got a six pin lead. As we welcome Jim Healy and his staff, our title sponsor of the 62nd U.S. Open here at Brunswick Zone, Carolier in New Jersey, leading us to the Uniroyal Tire Rock and Roll, Randy. Dave Ryan, the most exciting event in sports, the sudden death roll-off in any sport, football, baseball, bowling, we've got it. PA gets nine, Mika gets eight, PA advances. What do you think about that? What we think, Patrick, is that was an incredibly exciting moment. Our first sudden death roll off on TV in two years. Fourth frame for Chris Barnes, and Randy's been a disaster in majors for one of the most talented bowlers on tour. 0 and 7 in his career. Last year, Patrick Healy, Dexter Tournament Champions, where you did so well. ABC Masters, U.S. Open. All losses, Chris Barnes. Why? It's like the $64,000 question. You know, he's lost his last eight games, or eight matches on television, 0-7 in majors. I think that's exactly what he needs to do, is just trust it. That's trusting right all right. There. That's been his theme all year, to try to break the slump on television. In majors, his foes are averaging over 231. So he's running at some pretty good bowlers. You know, what's amazing is Chris Barnes actually has a higher rev rate and hooks it more than Mika Koivuniemi. But he's actually going straighter than Mika was in his matches. Chris Barnes has moved right, he's taking his hand out of it. 
lot to accomplish for Chris with a win today. By far, he would become the fastest bowler to a million. He told us last night, that's important. But I'm 34 and was on the international circuit for a while for Team USA. Look at that crossing over again on his try for a Come turkey. On. And the right six off. pin up. Pry it off. Trust it. Let go of it. <laughs> Easier said than done. The prestige of the U.S. Open title, the money, place in the history books, not easy to get it off your hand when you feel like you're bowling in a phone booth. Ups the percentage, six pin down. Single pin conversions. Let's head down to Leslie Goodell. Guys, you'll notice that Patrick Allen is using the same kind of ball, but two different ones, depending on which lane he's in. On the right-hand lane, he's using a ball that allows him a little bit more control. On the left-hand lane, the ball he's using allows him to be a little bit more loose and aggressive. A little bit more back end for PA on the left lane. Do I get the shot clock over? A little more of a rolling type of ball. Both guys shot have used like all that. of their Thank re-racks. Again, PA Appreciate finds it. himself in the same situation he was in in his previous match, trying to regroup after a huge distraction. Relax. Shim it up. Liked it off his hand, six pin up. Good shot. Pretty similar to the last shot he threw, only he left a six eight. Check this out. Watch that side roll that's going to make the ball grip the middle part of the lane and then start to hook up. Just a little bit left of that down the lane is perfect. A little bit right of that goes right through the nose. And I'm talking half an inch either side of that spot. That's exactly what he told us last night, Randy. The margin for error, very slim, missed by just a fraction out of the pocket on this challenging U.S. Open 40-foot oil pattern. But Patrick's message to us last night Soft hands on this pattern. Don't overthrow it. Yeah, and the reason why, if your hand is nice and soft at the bottom of the swing, there's less chance of you grabbing it or overhitting it, thus keeping the ball on a much straighter, much more accurate line. Late help on number 10. We'll gladly take that break. Catches the uh, light swisher here. Nice little break. Still trails by 15. Can't emphasize enough what a great year it's been for Chris Barnes outside of television. Second in points behind Patrick Allen. Fifth on the money list. Second in tour average behind leader Walter Williams Jr. Perfect shot. But on TV, the troubles have haunted Chris Barnes. Will it change today as he goes for his first ever major championship? We're coming to you from Brunswick Zone Carolier, Historic Bowling Center, North Brunswick, New Jersey, not far from New York City. Dave, Randy, and Leslie, along with our entire ESPN PBA crew. Don't forget, coming up next on ESPN NFL Pro Bowl Skills Competition. As soon as we wrap up action, our live presentation of the 62nd U.S. Open. 25 pin lead potentially for Barnes with a strike. Good pin action down. They all go. Show you that the margin of error is very minute today. Check this out. The ball on the right side of the screen is the one that strikes. The one on the left is the one that goes high. Obviously, Chris wants to throw a lot more of the ones on the right. And again, it's just a matter of inches. In fact, you could hit the same target, but get it off your hand poorly. And it's the difference between striking and going Brooklyn or missing the head pin right. PA needs a strike. To be down 15, looks for a double seventh frame. <laughs> All 10 down for Patrick Allen, who leads the PBA Tour in points. He's got two wins, also tops on the money list.
Beautiful shot here. PA keeps himself in the match. A strike will cut Chris Barnes' lead to five. Has to put, scores. There they are. Has to put pressure on Chris Barnes to do that. He must strike here in the eighth frame. Spinning messenger won't take the six down, and it stands for Patrick. Oh, yes. Just mentioned the points list. Mm -hmm. the winner, top four, are off to the round of Super 16, which puts you in a great position to win the world championship in Ypsilanti, Michigan. To come close to wrapping up our season along with the Dexter Tournament Champions in April. Harry Smith points title will go to the leader at the end of our season. And Patrick's in the driver's seat right now in that department, but here, Chris Barnes is standing in the way. If Chris Barnes wants to win a major championship, he needs to strike in this frame. PA has given him the opening. It's up to him now to step through and take advantage of it. Goes for the biggest turkey of his career, right here. Wow. He box. See, box. Seen that before. Yeah. Commit. Chris Barnes uses an extremely tight thumb hole. And watch this, right at the bottom of the swing. Whoops, something doesn't feel right. I better not let go of it. Goes as a shot clock violation. It's high. He couldn't overcome the distraction of that balk. PA still not finished. Chris Barnes fails to put him away. Anybody's match. No, Chris has had trouble. Oh, help. Look out, can you believe it? An open frame so late in the match for Chris Barnes. Last year of the Masters, Chris Barnes right through the face to lose it to Walter A. Williams Jr. Same situation. Last year's US Open shops the same spare with 3610. Unbelievable. One pin match. The lead has completely evaporated for Chris Barnes. But he rebounds nicely with a great ball there. Still mine. Still mine. He thinks it's still his tournament to win. How will Patrick Allen respond? Here's where he chops the 3-6-10. But look at the way he rebounds off of that disastrous miss. He comes right back and dead flushes it on the left lane. Patrick Allen, ninth and 10th. Chris Barnes will finish the match on the right lane. We already had one sudden death roll off. Could we have another one? How dramatic could that be? Avoids a split. Oh! Down goes number 10! Are you kidding me? Come on! All right, dude. Still a one pin match. PA strikes out in the 10th frame. Chris Barnes will have to match whatever Patrick Allen does in the 10th to win by one. Right now. Right now. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. Shot clock violation. He's going to take it. Hey, forget about the fine that he has to pay. This shot is much more important than paying a $500 shot clock, shot clock violation fine.
Patrick <laughs> Allen doing his best. He hate me imitation. Tripping the six into the eight. Don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. Come on. Now PA takes a nine pin lead. Come on. Trying to finish out in style. Tenth frame. Look at how tight it is, folks. Don't go anywhere. Seven pin. <laughs> Threw that as great as he could possibly throw it in this situation and gets nine. Chris Barnes now needs to match exactly what PA just did. A strike, nine spare. Chris Barnes will win by one pin. Sorry. All on his shoulders in moments. Gets the seven, and now it is official. Chris Barnes needs a strike plus a nine spare to win the 62nd U.S. Open. Anything less, and Patrick Allen will win his first major championship and his third title of the year. Got to be a strike. Gets it. Showed some real serious maple moxie with that shot right there. He doesn't hoop it up. He knows exactly what he needs. This isn't over. He knows he needs at least nine spare or a strike to win his first major. Anything less, Patrick Allen will win. Or could it be another tie? It's nine! Chris Barnes is a major champion winner. What a huge break. That ball went right through the nose. He could have split. He could have got six. He still needs a spare. One more it, pin, Randy Peterson. One more pin for Chris Barnes to win his first ever major and break the eight match TV losing streak. Yes! 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 The monkey is off. Chris Barnes back. Finally! That was awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. That makes up for a bunch of them right there. Woo! All right, Linda, Ryan, and Troy, I love you guys. Yeah! You guys are great. You guys are great. He told us he cannot live in the past. All the struggles on the majors. The Mr. eight max losing streak. And a tribute Thanks to Dick Weber as well. Today. What a moment for Chris Barnes. From North Brunswick, New Jersey, the 62nd U.S. Open presented by Oda Readers is brought to you by Miller High Live. To live simply, proudly, boldly, manly, this is the High Live. By Uniroyal Tires, the official tire of the PBA Tour. Uniroyal Tire is trusted by American families since 1892. By Bear, the more you know, the more you trust Bear. And by Odor Readers with unique Zorbatex technology, destroys foot odor and absorbs sweat on contact. Chris Barnes has been shining his new trophy as he gets his first major title of his career. And I know you hate the cliche, you got the monkey off your back, but it is appropriate here. And what's it like for you to win this tournament? Oh, well, it's an honor. And, uh, you know, it was a sad week for all of us with Dick Weber's passing, but... Uh, uh, maybe some small part of this, well, a lar large part of this is due to him. And without him, we wouldn't all be here today, I don't think.
What did you do differently in this match, and, and how beneficial was it to just have to have one match today? Well, I think it's always better when you're bowling the world's greatest bowlers to only have to win once. <laughs> uh, I don't think I could have handled another one of those. Yeah, but you, he is now the first, uh, he is the fastest to $1 million in career earnings, so congratulations. He gets $100,000 for today's win. Back to you guys. Leslie, what a moment for Chris Barnes. First ever major and sixth career PBA title. Wrapping up a great day of bowling excitement from North Brunswick, New Jersey. Congratulations to Chris Barnes. With Leslie Goodell and Randy Peterson, our entire crew is Dave Ryan saying so long. Be sure to join us again next Sunday at 12.30 Eastern on ESPN for the PBA Cambridge Credit Classic from the AMF Babylon Lanes in West Babylon, New York. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Coming up next, the NFL Pro Bowl Skills Competition. Chris Barnes, a winner today.